G'day fellas, and we are back with another Age of Empires 4 video, this time not a casted game. I've seen <laughs> this one guy that comments, he's like, another custard game. Because I realize with my accent, I say casted game, and it's like custard for breakfast, so not another custard game. <laughs> uh, we are looking at the pup. Now, I'm a little bit slow to get to this, a little bit late to the party. If you've uh, checked out Fitzbro's channel already, you'll see that he has posted a video about it, going into quite some depth. Now, I watched that video, I don't remember all the changes that are in here. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the changes that are coming to Age of Empires 4. And you might be wondering what the hell is the pup. So the pup is the public update preview. It's kind of anyone can access it right now in Steam. It's only available for a few days. So we're going to be making a lot of videos about it over the coming few days, hopefully. Um, and essentially, there's a whole bunch of new stuff that they're going to be changing. So the biggest thing, though, is that they're adding in custom maps. Uh, and so not only are there new custom maps and like custom game modes and things like that, uh, but you're actually able to edit. They're giving you an edit. In fact, they're giving you a content creator. So me as a content creator will, will be able to use the content creator and there's going to be some content creation section potentially. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about what we've got. So uh, I, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find this Reddit post. The reason why it's on Reddit is because the Steam post, it's uh, hidden behind like the login and stuff like that. It's not formatted, formatted that well either. Whereas this one's formatted very well. If you want to pause it and read it, go through it. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of stuff, but I want to just get straight into the balance stuff. You guys know I care a lot about balance. Uh, balance is really the, the lifeblood of, uh, of strategy games. So it's important that we know exactly what they're up to. But um, just to give you an idea of some of the changes, you're going to have Dire Wolves as a tuning pack. So tuning pack changes like a statistic, a number. So think about like a wolf, right? You know how big it is? Well, what if we increase the size of it? Well, that's what it does. It also makes them have more hit points, more damage. So uh, Rus players, they're going to be happy. Everybody else, not so much. Uh, excuse me. Normally, uh, as I said in the last video, I would normally mute that and you guys wouldn't hear it. But because I'm on camera, I figure why not? You guys can have some love. Um, so their update goals, balance, change log. Uh, so we've got, they want to tighten the win rates in preparation for the first ranked seasons. Now, if you've seen the win rates, you will already know that they're pretty tight. Honestly, it can be hard. Play rates especially are very tight. All the civs are very playable. People want to play them. And this, is, this is hard to do. As you guys know, I play League of Legends. I play a Nivea, a champion, and it's got like a 2%, less than 2% pick rate. There are some champions that have got like 24% pick rate. Uh, some champions have, have got like 0.2% pick rate. It's hard to get everybody wanting to play Play those civilizations and they've done a great job with that now it's just about bringing in that um about, about bringing in those win rates so weakening the mongols weakening delhi making english a bit stronger that's what it's all going to be about so they're also going to encourage earlier conflict on the map with deer patches mm. improve the feel and of moving naval units and increase strategic options through more effective retreats good increase the risk and counterplay when constructing buildings near the enemy forces good uh, ensure sif unique bonuses stand out instead of being niche counters that's actually very good uh, make dynasty bonuses more useful for the period of the game in which they are unlocked china mains all over the world just reaching out and crying <sighs> create more compelling decision making around landmark picks that's really good honestly uh in and for seed, we have a little show match between the Viper and the Muslim. And the show match was you pick the enemy sieve and you also pick the landmarks that they go. And during that, it became evident that, hey, there's actually not a lot of bad landmarks. There are some really bad landmarks. That, that's getting loud. Is that getting loud? It's not getting that loud. It looks like it's getting loud. I feel like I'm louder. Um, there are some bad landmarks, but there's not a lot of them. Like Abbasid Trade Wing, Delhi Tower of Victory... Um, Holy Roman Empire. Even like the Mindwork Palace is like absolutely good. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about it. Now we know what their goal is. Let's talk about the civilization. So core units, field construction build time of Springled increase from 30 to 80 seconds. Wonderful. Uh, field construction build time of Mangonel increased from 40 to 80 seconds. Wonderful. Field construction build time of Traction Trebuchet rather increased from 35 to 80 seconds. Wonderful. Scout hunting bow reload time reduced from 2 to 1 seconds. Great. Scout melee weapon cooldown reduced from 4 to 2 seconds, and scout melee weapon damage reduced from 4 to 2. This is good. This is really good. Um, so just to talk about this, this is really important. Uh, field construction. So at the moment, we're seeing like Abyssin and Mongols, both very strong civilizations in the current meta. And part of the reason why is because you can be out on the map and you can be converting those resources that you're harvesting right now into units that you can be using right now. And that's what's so strong. So this really helps out. Another great change that I think would be made or that should be made is reducing the amount of units that can actually build the siege as well. So right now, I think it sits at like 
uh, 16 or something silly like that. Like, bring that number down to, like, 8, but keep the rate the same. I don't know. We'll, we'll work it out. It's important. As, as, look, I like to say this a lot, even though sometimes I don't like to preach it. Um, you got to take things slow with balance. You can't just be like, all right, look, we're going to throw out everything. Let's, you know, let's kill it with a thousand cuts. Uh, no, they're, they're taking it slowly. These are already some pretty big changes. Let's see how this works, but it's already looking better. So good job to you guys doing work. Economy. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to make this bigger. We got the whole screen right here. Why don't we make this bigger? I'm sure there's already a comment down below saying, Drongo, make it bigger, you dickhead. Well, there you go, mate. There you go. Uh, I heard you. I heard you. Uh, economy. Villager hunted meat carry capacity increased from 10 to 25. Survival techniques uh, meat carry bonus removed. Survival techniques hunted meat harvest rate increased from oh god increased from 10 to 15 percent and research time reduced 75 to 45 so making it more attractive in the early game but at the same time i don't know if i'm really incentivized to do this it's one of those things where it's like if you reduce the cost too much everybody gets it and if the cost is too high nobody gets it it's like it's such a you guys will know survival techniques isn't really picked up that much maybe the rus will pick it up and even then it's like 50 50 because you can use it on the deer i'm uh, age of new did a great video on this and about picking it up it works really effectively on the deer but at the same time there's so many caveats to that um so yeah it, it can be hard to want to invest into it especially if there's like oh do i go wheelbarrow or survival techniques <laughs> obviously it's wheelbarrow um so let's see if that makes it a bit more viable but i definitely like this buff this is definitely a buff 100 percent uh to um to hunted uh, meat so great great it needs a buff it needs a buff um naval improved so uh, just to explain why this needed a buff you want to incentivize people to go onto the map and to get deers if 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 i can go and get deer i don't have to pay for farms but if i can if i can pay for farms i stay in my base and i'm very happy because i just stay in my base whereas if my enemy's out gathering those deer then you can see it's going to be very effective here with survival techniques getting even stronger even better um, so this is a great way to incentivize more aggression because you might not realize it, but this is, by changing the economy in this way makes people more aggressive because I have more incentive to get out onto the map to take those deer for myself and not let my enemy take them. Next point, naval. Improve the, the responsiveness of small and medium ships. Good. Arrow ships can no longer fire while moving. Bravo. Extended line research time reduced from 75 to 45. Good. No one was getting it. Drift nets also. Good. No one was getting that. Galley population reduced from four to three. Galley was already strong. Junk population reduced from four to two. Good. I mean, that brings both of those guys up so that they're fighting out with a Hulk in the second age. Then it's a bit better for them. Gallius population reduced from six to five. Good. Was underused. Attack ship range. So that's not your arrow ship. That's attack ship. Ranged armor reduced by one, except for the French Hulk. Okay, so that, that means that... So you had like a rock, paper, scissors where attack ships were good against arrow ships. Uh, but because they were slow, they were a little bit worse against fire ships. But the fire ships... Uh, or the you know the explosive ships weren't very good against the arrow ships and it was kind of like that um but this kind of makes arrow ships a little bit better uh, against its attack ships so that's good uh backler uh looks like it gets its damage increased attack speed also reduced uh oh they actually that's good in in trades though that's good that's a buff uh warship formation spacing reduced from 4.5 to 3 tiles does that mean things are going to get closer together i feel like we should be pushing them further apart and Baoshuan weapon range from 9 to 8. Naval Navigator no longer gives plus 1 range, rather just gives 4 line of sight instead of 1. Um, they buff the weakest units, the junk, the galley. I mean, actually, the galley's one of the strongest. Uh, the junk, uh, the backler. I like the, the design change of arrow ships no longer being able to fire while moving. Um, hopefully, they do the same for the Hulk and... They make it so that maybe they should make it so that the hulk when it fires it can't move after like a second or something like that like it has to stop do an attack command sit there reload and then gets to move on i don't know something like that but it, it just you can't be doing this spin to win thing it just it doesn't feel good anyway let's <laughs> let's move on naval bug fixes updated the selection area for all fishing deposits to match the visual this also resolves the issue where deep sea fish became harder to select good uh it's also indicate the benefit from range damage right okay good that's fine core buildings and upgrades and by the way guys this is going to be really long so if there's a part of this video that you want to look at me reacting to or me talking about in particular um i don't know i can't promise you i'm going to leave timestamps down below but i mean look at this this is ludicrous we're already we're nine minutes through the video and i haven't even gotten past the second part yet so i mean it's uh it's going to take some time but let's talk about where we're going from here core buildings and upgrades buildings under construction receive 50 percent more damage great so torch damage is like 10 
and then you get to feudal, it's like 10 plus 5 or something like that. So 15, 50%, it goes up to 22 and a half. So a noticeable difference. In Age of Empires 3, it's actually four times the damage. So they would receive 300% more damage. You do 10 siege damage, you now do 40 siege damage if the building is under construction. So you think about it, when you're on the aggressive and you're you're taking down an enemy building, if it's under construction, four times more damage. At the same time, if you're on defensive and you're killing outposts or towers or whatever it is, four times more damage. That's a bit crazy. 50%, it's a good middle ground. Let's see how it goes. I'd like to see that even a bit higher potentially. Keep build time increase from 120 to 140. Good change. Stone wall tower build time increase from 60 to 90. I mean, let's bump that way up. Let's get that up to 600 seconds. I mean, it's, it's ludicrous. But a change in the right direction. Boiling oil cost increase from 250 gold, 100 stone to 500 gold, 200 stone. Perfect. In line with its power. One of the most powerful technologies in the game. Really good. Research time also increased from 60 to 90. Wonderful. Uh, greased axles movement speed reduced from 20 to 15. Good change. Geometry moved from the university to the siege workshop. Good. Because in the university, you just build the university, you click the text that you want, and you don't think about it. At least now, if you've got it in the siege workshop, then you're putting that siege workshop out of business for 90 seconds or something like that. Well, yeah, we can see 45 seconds, it seems. Uh, they also reduce the cost. Geometry, I'm pretty sure, is uh, trebuchet and ram damage. Um, but I would have to double check that. Uh, siege workshop removed from... Or siege works removed from the siege workshop to the university. Removed completely from the Chinese astronomical... Siege works. What was siege works? Oh, gosh. Now, you, now you're making me think. Uh, improved version. A thousand stone siege works? What the hell is siege works? Siege works for the Delhi Sultanate research time increase from 900 to 1350. What is siege works? I'm, I'm going to have to check here. Give me a sec, fellas. We're going to have to check that. Tithe Barnes now correctly provides 13 stone per minute instead of 15. So it's a good change. Uh, we're going to just quickly check on siege works. We'll keep this music going, though. Thank you, the Viper. Uh, I actually mentioned when I was at N4C, I'm like, Viper, I want to thank you for uploading all of the music onto your channel uh, because whenever I do a video, I'm like, I'm looking into it. Oh, God. Oh, God. You can see I'm watching Viper's video right now. Uh, so let's just go to Rus and let's go to Siegeworks. Where are you at, dog? Siegeworks, right? Siegeworks moved on Chinese astronomical clock towers. Got it. Let's go there. Oh, it won't be in the Siege Workshop because it got moved to the, the university. Yeah, you're fucking smart, Drongo. Oh! Oh! Oh, bravo! That is a great change! This is such a... This is a really, really good technology. Good... 10 out of 10, guys. Good shit. Good shit. That, it's such an important technology right there. Throw it in the university. Makes it a little bit harder to research. Uh, what was it? Geometry. Yeah, geometry. So uh, that's... Uh, geometry is the... Uh, we probably should have kept it open do just to double check. The treb ram damage. So you bring that in, make it a little bit more viable uh, without having to go for that university. Yeah, smart move. I like it. I think that's a pretty smart move. Uh, and then it makes siege works and imperial tech. It's a really good technology. So yeah. All right. Civilization specific stuff. We're going to start with the Abbasid dynasty. Uh, I'm going to take a swig of my Red Bull. This is the new uh, Ruby edition. Uh, pomegranate flavor. Um, honestly, guys, it's my favorite so far. 10 out of 10. Not sponsored at all. <laughs> I'm actually not sponsored. Um, I'm not sponsored by Red Bull, but I do love them. You guys know that. Okay, a lot of stuff going on here. Changes to camels, mainly. So keep in mind, they got the two camels. First one's the range one. Hey, we need that music back. Where is it? Viper, get in here. Let's turn it down a bit as well. Uh, let's go like this. Oh, God. Yeah, all right, there we go. Okay, so the first one's the Camel Archer, the range one, available in age two. Uh, so the move speed is increased slightly. Bonus, bonus damage versus Spearman reduced from three times to two times. But their damage is increased from 10 to 12. So before it was 10 with 20. Now it's 12 with 12. So they're doing 20 four damage to spears before they were doing 30 damage. So they're doing six less damage to spears, but two damage more to everything else. Sounds like a great change. I would be very happy with that if I was a camel archer or a camel archer enjoyer. Uh, camel riders. So their damage has been increased from nine to 14, but their bonus damage to cavalry gets reduced from 18 to 14. So technically they're doing one more damage to cavalry, but they're doing five damage more to everything else as well. This is really big. It is really good. And it's 
potentially going to change the way that the camel rider is used this is a really interesting unit because it it has the ability to get heavy like a uh like a knight would through camel barding which you can see uh down here um but it is a light unit it is a light camel it's not a heavy camel which means that it's not counted by the crossbow so it's this weird sort of niche unit, which is honestly, it's the way I feel unique units should be. I love the Arbolatria, don't get me, or Arbolatria, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's just objectively better than a crossbow. And so like, it, do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I love the idea of units getting, or civilizations getting a unique unit that is kind of unique. It's not just a reskinned version with an extra five armor, or it's not just, you know, a, a reskinned archer with an extra two range. Like, sure, it's, it's nice, but... At the same time, I love unique units like the Camel Rider. So really good change. Camel Barding now only affects Camel Riders. Good. That's fine. It's moved to the Blacks or from the Blacksmith to the Stables. Good. Uh, and the cost has been reduced. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Oh my God. This is really good. So this is, if I remember correctly, Camel Barding is the uh, technology that gives them the increased, um, the increased, uh, armor i want to say might be health <laughs> god we should have left the game open to double check um it, but it was so expensive it was a thousand resources i'm like when the hell am i gonna get that like don't even bother now it's 325 hell yeah brother hell yeah research time reduced as well uh economic wing changes um they only touch agriculture god now keep in mind at the moment abyssin so freaking strong so strong at the moment uh now obviously that cut the music for a second we gotta talk about this at the start of N4C, Abbasid were literally, in my tier list, the lowest Civ. By the end of N4C, they are sitting in the second highest tier. They were sleeper busted and nobody knew, but now we know. And now you're going to throw these on top? Like, you got to be really careful, developers. I know that we were talking about, like, just moving things by a, a, a small amount, and we've done that, but we have moved the meta by a metric mile. And so just watch out, because you might have a really busted civilization on your hands. Let's DJ throw that music back on. Thank you, DJ. Uh, I'm also the DJ. <laughs> uh, so agriculture costs reduced. It was... Uh, so if I remember correctly, agriculture it was the plus 15% farming bonus or something cool good good change uh, though that doesn't seem like that was how much it costed it was probably something different anyway it's a buff uh trade wing changes okay this is big grand bazaar moved from the imperial age to the feudal age we're gonna need to get this up sorry we're gonna need to get this up uh, I'm, I'm gonna mute it though it probably makes sense to mute it at this point we've got a lot of things that are open right now come here so i can mute you there we go um so we'll, we'll have a look at agriculture as well we'll just get an idea of that Ah, oh, that's mods. Uh, so we're going to get Abbasid Dynasty. So we're going to look... and Let's look at Camel Barding first. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's in the Blacksmith now. Oh, no, that's Camel Handling. Uh, so it's Camel Barding is going to be in the stable. Yeah, plus two armor. This is... Oh, my God. It's so good now. Oh, my God. It's actually... Camels are going to be so good. Oh, I can't wait, dude. You, you, fuck, Abbasid are going to be so good. They, this is a hard sieve to balance, man. They're going to... Oh, my God. I want to be an Abbasid main now. Oh, man, I'm getting all juiced up. Okay, okay, okay. Agriculture. So the cost uh, was reduced. Um, let's take, take a look. It is under the economic wing agriculture. Yeah, it is this one. Okay, I didn't realize it was that expensive before, uh, but they reduced it significantly. So that's a great change. Really good change there. Um, and then trade wing changes. Okay, so we go down to the trade wing. So Grand Bazaar uh, was moved from imperial to feudal. And then we've got... Um, Spice Roads goes from feudal to imperial. So Spice Roads used to be, uh, or increases the gold income from trader and trade ships by 30%. I didn't think this was a bad technology to have in age one. Grand Bazaar is traders and trade ships also return with a secondary resource. This resource is 25% the base gold value and is set at the market. Yo, this is pretty nice. Yeah, that, that is pretty nice. I'm going to be real with you guys. Imagine if you could get that in age three. Man, they, if they move that to age three... I could really see an argument to make the trade wing a thing. You know, like they, they say, stop trying to make fetch a thing or stop trying to make the trade wing a thing. Or well, you wouldn't have to stop saying that. Like it, it would just, it would just be there. Um, also, they increased the cost of spice roads, which is to be expected. It's now an imperial age tech. Uh, military wing changes, boot camp reduction of requirements reduced from imp to feudal. So we've now got boot camp in the military wing. Oh, damn. And then camel support. 
goes to plus oh damn dude they're making it viable this is actually sick okay so what they're going to be doing is they're taking oh my god wow this is actually decent dude i mean is it enough to be like fresh food stuff so yeah we're not going to go that probably not but it's actually decent as hell man oh and then you get camel rider shields as well you to hold on i can get plus three and dude 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 Oh, it's, in, it's Imperial. I thought it was Castle, man. I was really going to fucking start popping off. Can I just say, boys? It's been a long time since I've really enjoyed Age of Empires. Like, obviously, N4C happened and I was enjoying it like crazy there. But looking at these changes, like, I can... You can see, like, the passion that's coming out of me. Like, this is genuine, man. I'm fucking excited about this shit. Whew. All right. That's a good change. Camel Rider Shields cost reduced here. And they... Uh... And the research oh yeah so this was the tech here camel rider shields this was the tech that was in age three and it's fucking it was 300 700 i'm like who the hell's gonna get that like you're fucking crazy dude 100 250 yeah that's good good change uh oh damn dude that's that red bull coming through right there oh gosh okay camel support armor bonus increase from under two i mean we've already seen it uh, Abbasid bug fixes. Faith can no longer be used to convert naval unit. Oh my god, I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, so remember, Abbasid have got this thing in the... Uh, what is it? I think it's just like their bonus up here. Yeah, Faith. Uh, Imams can convert units without holding a relic. Uh, but they can only target a single unit. So in the culture wing, uh, it's just like one of their bonuses. Sure. Um, converted Abbasid villagers will correctly have their build menu updated to match their new allegiance. Nice. Abbasid Golden Age production speed bonus now properly applies to all production buildings and not only military production buildings. Cool change. Camel Archer bow is no longer invisible after upgrading incendiary bows. Good fix. Ca Composite bow tooltip now correctly displays 33% attack speed instead of 25. By the way, this is part of the reason why I'm like confident Abbasid are just such a beast, man. Fuck, I love Abbasid. I, I remember when Age of Empires 4 originally came out and I was looking at the eight civs. I'm like, if there's one civ I'm fucking excited about, it's Abbasid. And they are looking so good now. Um, so composite bows available in the archery range you can see here uh, so it is yeah 33% faster now I'm pretty sure house of wisdom I don't think that boot camp actually affects all infantry I think it's only the melee infantry that you can make out of the barracks I don't think it affects your archers but if it does can you imagine like late game having fucking camel support plus your boot camp archers plus like just all your other upgrades like it's gonna be sick dude all right uh, improved processing now applies to town centers. Improved processing is this one right here. Villagers drop off 8% more resources. So I guess before it was only going to the production buildings. Uh, now not going to be the case. Cool. Chinese stone wall tower build time increased from 90 to 120 seconds. Stone wall tower. 90 to 120 seconds. Didn't they change it up here so that the stone wall tower build time increased from 60 to... So why do the Chinese have... What's the point in China having a bonus where they build shit faster if you're going to just take it away from them? Like, uh, uh, I'm a very much like, I don't like it when we do individual changes for a civilization, for a unit that everything has got. Like, can you imagine if I was just like, oh, French uh, horsemen are going to have like minus one damage? Why? Why though? I mean, we did it for hulks, but that's because we've got this asymmetric design on water that in my opinion probably shouldn't be there in the feudal age but it is um i can understand it there but here uh, i don't know i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see i understand like they basically can build it in 60 seconds because of the, their chinese bonus actually no even then it only probably goes to 90 because the chinese bonus is 100 percent faster 50 percent for production or only 50 percent faster uh for defenses so 100 percent faster would mean that that goes from 120 down to 60. So 50% just takes it to 90. I guess it just nerfs the stone wall tower build time. Mm. I feel like you're slapping on a band-aid something that really needs to have its leg chopped off. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you're slapping on a band-aid on, on, a, on a limb that we probably need to chop off. Uh, I don't like the, the stone wall towers, but I'm sure you can make them viable. Uh, ancient techniques. You know what you could do to stone wall towers? Make it so that you have to make an emplacement on them. Like, th just make them cheaper, like 100 stone or whatever, but then actually... Oh, 
get into it, boys. Um, you could make it cheaper to build. So it gives you that line of sight. It gives you that nice feeling of protection. Oh, but then the problem is you get that you get boiling oil. They should really remove boiling oil needs to be removed from Stonewall Towers. Can we do that? Can I get can I get some behind this? Can I can I get let's start the petition on that. Remove boiling oil from Stonewall Towers. Make it so Stonewall Towers don't have an emplacement when they're built. Reduce their cost down and then increase the cost of the emplacements on them. And then oh, and if if you want to say, but oh, they should only have access to the sprinkled. Okay, we'll only give them a sprinkled emplacement that they can get after fucking 120 seconds. I don't know. But like this to me just feels like you're throwing a band-aid on something that has like it, the the limb is necrotic. Let's just cut the thing off. Um all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ancient techniques cost oh, gosh. I just realized we're 25 minutes into this, and it's like we ain't even getting started yet, boys. Like, phew. All right, ancient techniques cost increased from 150 wood, 350. I mean, they're basically just increased ancient techniques for anybody who doesn't know about that. It is the uh, university tech that increases. I want to say it's villager um, working speed. Is that court architects I'm thinking of? No. Did they change what building you get it from? Ancient techniques cost increased from 150 wood. Research time increased. Bro, it's in here, right? Did they change the building that you get it from? And they didn't mention ancient techniques. Am I looking at the Chinese? Where's my ancient techniques at, yo? Monastery? Nope. Um, market? Nope. Town center? Nope. Hello. Whoa. Bro, where's my ancient techniques? Do they just forget to give us ancient techniques? I'm 99% sure ancient techniques is available in the Imperial Age at the university. Maybe I'm going crazy. I'm not going crazy, boys. It's just like, it must have like, maybe they accidentally removed it or something. Or maybe I'm just fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> God, every, every single time I like hear this music, I'm, I re remember like singing it with my sister. She would always do this shit as well. She'd be like, oh, she <laughs> really get into it. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't know where, where it is. I think that they might have mucked up. Uh, but essentially it was a technology that you get like 8% uh, resource or uh, villagers gather faster time. So it's not more resources. It's just that they are gathering faster. And by the end of the game, it really doesn't do much. Barbican of the Sun sight range increased to match the outpost. Good change. Imperial Spire's ability now reveals vills, traders, trade ships, fishing boats, and or fishing ships and officials. Really good change. Honestly, uh, Beastie Cutie, I think, was the one who said it. They should just make it so the Imperial Spire's ability just sees, like, military as well. Like, it, it's only for a short period of time. Just show everything. Why not? Actually make the landmark viable. Do that. Dynasty changes. Dynasty units and buildings are no longer gated when advancing to the next dynasty. Wonderful change. Yuan dynasty movement speed bonus no longer applies to siege. Obviously, as a China player, I don't like it, but I understand why it happens and subsequently I support it. Village requirement reduced from Song dynasty to Tang dynasty. So just to clarify, you're telling me in the Tang dynasty, I can make a village. What's my Chinese build order now? I don't make a house anymore. I make a village. I mean, I could make a house, and I probably should make a house, at least one. There's still a build limit of... I think there's still a build limit here. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder how that plays now. But obviously, then that reduces the Im impact of the Song Dynasty. Granary requirement reduced from, uh, reduced from Yuan Dynasty to Song. The harvest bonus is reduced from 15% to 10%. So we're just going to check that as well. Uh, so if we go in here... Oh god, what have I done? Song Dynasty. Granary. Villages... Fuck it, dude, it's so expensive. I'm never going to build this. Why do you think I'm going to build something that's 250 wood? Okay, let, okay. All right. I'm at 60 villages. I'm in a very difficult one versus one against a Delhi player. They've taken three sacred sites. Um... It's not looking good. They've just got up to the next age. 
am I adding a granary? Let's have a look. Villagers can drop off food at this building. Improves the farm gather rate of nearby villagers by 10%. Generates tax each time a resource is dropped off. No, I'm not building this. Okay, th this is a, one of the things that's like important to remember. Improves the farm gather rate of nearby villagers by 10%. Okay, first and foremost, it's a farm. So it's already, let's assume that we've got horticulture. So 15%, okay? And now we're throwing in a another so on that 15 percent we don't get like we get mitigating returns on every other percent so if you go fertilization that's not 15 percent on both of those two factors like the base and then the 15 that is just 15 percent on the base so congratulations you're up to 30 percent now and now up to 45 percent and then obviously like you can really start to stack that up and like get three of them i think three is the max and sure that sounds good on paper but i guarantee you dude it's gonna take so long to pay off I just can't see how it's worth. And they're big as well. They're really, really big. And I love the design, but they're so big. Maybe? Do you put one down before you transition to farms? Is that the play? Do you transition to farms and put one down at the start? It's a lot though. That's three farms, man. That's like four farms almost. I mean, it's three farms, Rongo. It's three farms. Um, I just don't know how I feel about it. I think you go like... Four farms next to the town center. Granary, and then farms around it. That's what I'm thinking. That, that, did you guys see that? It's like, that. that's what I'm thinking. Um, I don't know how otherwise you would do it. Uh, Pagoda requirement reduced from Ming Dynasty to Yuan Dynasty. Another good change. Uh, the relic resource bonus reduced from 100 down to 100 gold, 50 wood, 50 food, 50 stone per minute. Yeah, good change. Uh, and really gives you a great incentive to actually get relics as China. At the moment, the only civs that really had incentive to get relics were the Holy Roman Empire um, and the Rus. The Delhi also to an extent, just because it was very easy to transition from, or like to, to get them. It was so easy, you didn't really have to think about it. But yeah, th I think this is a good change. Now as China, I want to be getting all those relics as quick as I can because that's a fuckload of resources. Everyone, think about this. Everyone else is getting 100 gold a minute and you're getting like 100 you're getting 250 bro that's literally a fucking the new regnitz is here it's the pagoda think about that for a second i mean it's hard like you've got to invest so much now it's, it's not really don't worry i'm getting ahead of myself official changes so not the dynasty uh so this is still under the chinese supervised production and research speed reduced from 200 to 150 so remember this kind of snuck through in another patch uh then they fixed it up now they're going to go back and do this official train time increased from 20 to 30 seconds i don't like that so i'm basically losing 1.5 bills for that and they're changing the cost from 150 food to 100 food and 50 gold so basically making it if you want to get an official in the early stages of the game which you need to then you really need to be mining gold you can't just be collecting gold it's not going to work which further incentivizes you if you're already mining gold and you've invested in a mining camp then you're further in incentivized to go into a dynasty because you've already got the mining camp, you want to make use of that, but you don't have such an incentive to go into the Song Dynasty because you don't get the village anymore. You only have access to it at a sort of you have access to it as a base level, so you're only gaining access to the Chokunu and the villager train time. We'll see. We'll see. It's an interesting change, obviously a nerf, uh, just because like if you train two officials, you're losing three vills now. Um, Can they, can they just make it, bro? China would be actually fucking legit as fuck if my Imperial Academy could train, could train Imperial officials, dude. How sick would that be? How fucking sick would that be? I just make villages all age one. I get my Imperial Academy. I make four fucking Imperial officials from the Imperial Academy. I get my Barbican down. I'm fucking booming like a madman. Bro, can we, can we get that? Can we please make that a China change? I know that like you're already getting to the point like where China is getting to, I don't know. Maybe then you just, do you just, is that like, is it is that where China just becomes like mandatory Imperial Academy? Dude, that's when the landmark actually gets good. That 100%, like at the moment the landmark's okay, but that would make it good. And then you're looking at Barbican like, eh, it's not that good. But you want to get that Song Dynasty, so you're still going to make it. Uh, all right. Well, that, that's China changes. I mean, overall, just from like the, the Abbasid changes, really good. Why are the Abbasid changes good? They're good not for balance reasons, but because they make units that aren't viable more viable. Now, the Camel Archer was already viable. 
Uh, we have seen this used to great success in N4C. Uh, Camel Rider, though, is going to be incredibly viable now. I'm excited about that. Uh, huge, huge, huge changes to the economic wing and the trade wing and the military. I mean, these are all great things. Um, for the Chinese, I'm happy with all of these changes. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. Every, everything here is just looking very beautiful. Let's take a look at the English. Men at arm train time reduced from 22 to 15 seconds. Now, this isn't all civs. This is just the... I kind of like this. Oh, I don't know if I like this. Remember, I said I didn't like like the, the asymmetric civ... Or asymmetric unit balance. I don't like. Okay, what do I mean by that? If an archer has or cost X amount with all sieves, don't go and make it cost a little bit more for another sieve because they're balancing, like they're having trouble balancing it. I don't know if you get what I mean. My point is like, I, I want everything. If, if you have access to a men at arms, it doesn't matter if you're playing the English, it doesn't matter if you're playing the Abbasid. Your men at arms will always, always, always take the same amount of time to train, cost the same, smell the same, taste the same. Vanguard. <laughs> oh, she's stronger. Uh, Vanguard men at, arm, men at arms armor increased from two to three. That's fine because they're the only sieve with the Vanguard men at arms. Uh, so that's fine. Abbey of King healing rate increased from four health per 1.5 seconds to six health per one second. But still, you're kind of like, is it even that good? Because it like, <sighs> you got to be careful with it though. It does have the potential to be overpowered. Um, I, I still like I still feel like it's pretty useless yeah I still feel like it's useless J the only reason why it's so useless is simply because of how good the other landmark is the council hall is just so fucking amazing uh if you don't start council hall it not only does it telegraph to your enemy what you're doing but it also means that your transition into bows at a later point in the stage of the game is going to be significantly hampered so it's just easier to go into bows let's say if you let's let's say you're playing in a matchup and you know that you want to start cavalry you still go for the council hall in that situation just because you will want to make bows at some point maybe in team games that becomes useful i don't know but 1v1 still useless uh starting wood increase from 150 to 200 a great change uh English bug fixes. Setup camp no longer can be triggered while in combat. In combat, rather. Uh, this is a really good change as well. Um, so stops that passive healing from happening. Actually makes the Abbey of Kings more viable because you're you're going to have more damage on your units. Good changes. Uh, so small changes to the English, but not enough. I definitely think at the moment English. I mean, you can see what they're trying to do, right? They're they're trying to promote aggression in Age One with the English. How have they done that? You can actually see that they've got like a very clear. Excuse me. That's the that's a Red Bull. Like, you can see what their intent is here. They want people to start... Like, they're, they're trying to make age one shenanigans happen for the English. They want people to... Um, they, they want people to be rushing with men at arms more often. And the reason why people don't do that is because largely the most damage that you're going to be doing against an enemy is sieging them down. Sieging down their building. So a gold mine, a dock, uh, a potential outpost, something like that. But remember... The English don't have access to the spear in age one. They only have access to it in age two. The spear costs half the cost of a man at arms. If you, so me, the uh, the China enjoyer, I'm making spears and they're costing, did I say half? I don't think it's half. I don't think it's exactly half. It's like 60% or something like that. For Basically for every spear I'm making, you're making half a man at arms. And subsequently, I feel like, you know what we can do? Let's make it so the Vanguard men at arms torch damage is also increased uh to whatever it is in age two let's do that then maybe i'm more on board with this because the the issue that you're going to have is you're just going to have less units than your enemy uh would in, in that same situation and so it's like yeah my men at arm does damage but the thing is the men at arm isn't going to be able to kill villagers it's just going to be able to apply pressure on a tree line and spears already do that so I mean, this doesn't really do too much. And you're still not going to be diving underneath the town center uh, when you increase the armor from two to three. I mean, it basically just keeps you alive a little bit longer if you overextend. That's the sort of thing. Uh, but I mean, the, the Abbey of Kings here, you can see it. I can already, in my head, I'm already seeing like the men at arms build order coming in from the English where they stay in age one for like seven, eight, no, nine, ten minutes. Get the Abbey of Kings down, like immediately heal up. And then they get the 200 wood as well instead of the 150. 
All right, all right. Look, let's see. Let's see where this goes. I'm getting excited about this. Do we start seeing English men at arms in age one? Viper tried it. I remember he tried it on um, Ancient Spire. Uh, Viper did a men at arms rush with the English. <laughs> Didn't work for him. Didn't work for him. Poor guy. Sorry, Viper. I still love you. Um, <laughs> this looks good. This looks good. I'm, I'm excited about that. All right, let's talk about the next civ balance changes. French. Uh, so a whole bunch of bug fixes. So we've got the Arbolatory of Pavis ability now increases the armor by five instead of setting the armor to five. So a buff. Uh, fixed a bug with the French tech tree where, where traders were displayed in the Dark Age under Chamber of Commerce. Okay. S military Siege Engineer UI now matches other civilizations. Military Siege Engineer. I know what the tech... I know the tech of Siege Engineer. Or t the Siege Engineers. Uh, it's available in the university. Oh, that's Siege Works. What's Siege Engineers? Siege Engineers? The fuck is Siege Engineers, yo? French? College of Artillery? Is it over here? Siege Workshop? Yeah, that, that is the right tech there. The L Siege Engineers. Hold on. Military Siege Engineer UI. I got no idea what a Siege Engineer is. Am I... Am I asleep? The fuck is a Siege Engineer? Alright, we'll talk about it later. Uh, we're not gonna talk about it later. I got no idea. <laughs> Royal Knight. Uh, help text updated. Great. Uh, Holy Roman Empire. Okay, so French literally just gets... Um, they just get... Essentially an arbitrary buff. Uh, so before it was like plus five armor, it was set to instead of... So you, if you had plus two armor, it would just put you up to plus five instead of giving you plus seven. Um, so anyway, Holy Roman Empire. Uh, has our song finished? Yo, Viper. Yo, Viper, help me out, brother. Where you at, dog? There you are. Yeah, give it to me. Holy Roman Empire. Regnitz Cathedral relic capacity reduced from three to two. Okay. Burgrave Palace now produces infantry 400% faster instead of training units in batches of five. Okay. Mine work. I'm, I'm going to read through everything and then I'll think. Well, I mean, I'm still thinking, but like I will give you my opinion. Uh, Mine work Palace research discount increased from 25 to 30%. Research speed increased by 30 Oh, I love that. Hey I, hey, I said I'd wait to the end. Palace of Swabia villager production speed and discount reduced from 75% to 30, 66%. Good change. Basically makes it from four four town centers to three town centers worth because the villagers train in seven 6.66 instead of five yeah so over a 20 second period you're getting three villagers now instead of four uh inspired warrior effects duration increase from 30 seconds to 60 seconds Oof. hold on you're telling me that the prelate buff available in the Monastery? Inspired Warriors? Prelates can inspire military units, improving their armor by plus one and damage by 15%. Yo! Goes from 30 to 60 seconds? Oof. That's nice. I didn't know it was 30 seconds already, but 60 seconds sounds like a great deal. Marching drill cost reduced. Oh. oh. Marching drills reduce time from 90 to sec 60. Marching drills now affects prelates. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So good, dude. Added a prelate indicator for Holy Roman Empire players to be able to easily, more easily locate and keep track of their prelates. Kind of like um, the Delhi have got for their scholars or the Chinese have got for their imperial officials. I like it. Um, okay. Regnitz Cathedral relic capacity reduced from three to two. I still feel like the Regnitz is going to be very strong. You're still going to go the Regnitz always, I suspect. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're not. The Burgrave Palace is actually good, though. Dude, okay. Imagine this. The year is 2023. You've just got home from work. You sit down. You start off a ladder game. You pick the Holy Roman Empire. You age up with the Minework Palace. And you research marching drills, which now affects your prelates at a reduced time, 60 seconds, and a reduced cost, and it also gets buffed up by the increased speed. So instead of that being 60 seconds, it's probably like 47.3 seconds. 
And then on top of that, because you've saved a little bit of resources from that, you then invest in plus one. You send in your men at arms. They're destroying your enemy. You've got full map control. It's so beautiful. And you're thinking about age three. Where do you go from here? Do you go Regnitz? Do you go Burgrave? Well, the great news is... Wait for it. All right, wait for it. Here it comes. You can go both. Because that actually makes the Burgrave Palace viable. Before, when you did a batch of five, you had to wait until you had all the resources for those five. Well, now, what if I told you that you can start off like Archer, Horseman, in the first age, get like your upgrades, get to the third age, did I say first age? Second age. Get to the third age, and then you drop this bad boy down. You don't have to wait for 500 food and 100, and 100 gold, I think it was, anymore. You literally just click that button, Bam, bam, bam. It's, it's five barracks. You literally have five barracks in there. And it also does all of your techs faster as well. So your uh, veteran techs come through faster. Your elite techs come through faster. So let's say, hypothetically, you went with the Burgrave Palace. You're now going up to Imperial. Of course, you're using the Palace of Swabia because you're, you've got like 16 IQ. You appreciate that Palace of Swabia is the best landmark in the game. You get up there. You've now got the enemy pushing into your base because you just hit imp. Well, guess what? You click on your Burgrave Palace. You research your elite men at arms. And instead of it taking like, what, nine? Let's, let's check how long it takes. Instead of it taking like... Oh, it doesn't have the elite upgrades. Uh, let, let's just use this as like an example. I mean, th these are all a minute. So I'm going to assume a minute. This, this comes in in like, what, 16 seconds, 15 seconds? Hold on. 12 seconds. 12 seconds. So by the time your enemy's like, oh, I need to push him. He just reached imp before he gets his upgrades. Bro, I already got my upgrades. What do you... Go, go back to your base. Go back to your base. Sit down. All right. By placing relics... So look, overall, the changes... I, I like this. This is a good direction. Is the regnet still good? Yeah. Is it still great? No. No, definitely not. Because the thing is, right? All right. This is what you need to consider. A lot of people will be like, nah, Drongo, the regnet's is still busted as fuck. Okay. But hear me out. How much gold a minute right now with the Holy Roman Empire is five relics? It's 900 plus 200, 1100. How much is five relics now to the Holy Roman Empire? Well, it's 600 plus 300 for the three relics. So you're looking at 900 gold a minute. How much of a gold difference is there between those five relics that you capture out on the map in your, in your base, let's say a monastery, something like that, or an outpost because you can do that as the Holy Roman Empire? What's the difference between those five relics being in outposts or monasteries and a Regnitz Cathedral? Well, now it's 500 gold for those five relics versus 900 gold. So the difference is only 400 gold a minute. Now, obviously that's in the, the perfect scenario, perfect uh, scenario where you get all five relics. And that's not going to be the case all the time because typically you're only going to be getting like two to three relics uh, in, in these games. But it, there are cases where it does change. So... I think this is a good change. Um, and it means... I, I, I do think that the Burgrave Palace is going to be viable. Especially if you're behind. If your enemy gets up and steals all the relics on the map. Like, you don't even have to think twice about it. You just go straight to the Burgrave. Yeah, good change. Um, we'll see how it goes from here. But, I mean, Minework Palace looking pretty good. Already people were talking about Minework Palace actually being good. You're going to see it a lot more. That's for sure. HRE bug fixes. Uh, by placing relics in docks, it's not... You know what? I should probably say this. I probably should have said this at the start. We're 48 minutes through this video and I'm only saying it now. Uh, so this update is going to come through. It's like confirmed. The new patch, 100%. Uh, but this is like the early stages of it. So maybe not all the changes go through. Maybe some. But this is what they got at the moment. Um, so that's important. Okay, by placing relics in docks, it's no longer possible to surpass the maximum 25% attack speed bonus. Wonderful. Arkham Chapel Blueprint Aura. Range indicator has now been updated to use the correct gold color. The Great Palace of Flensburg Wonder can now properly make use of influence and the emergency repair ability. Good change. Docks can now properly make use of influence and the emergency repair ability. Good change. Keeps no longer grant a sprinkled when a unit is garrisoned and the sprinkled emplacement is not research. I didn't know that that was a thing, but that's awesome. Relics placed inside of docks no longer increase attack speed of all players' ships. Good change. <laughs> Mongols. Textiles improved has been added to the town center. Available in the castle age. Increases the health of villagers by 50. 
Fuck, why not? Why not, dude? Why not? I mean, it gives you incentive to have your town center near an Uvu. You know what I mean? Like, you're not normally going to have your town center near an Uvu, but now I can be like, well, I, I don't mean that. I mean, like, you don't care if your, your town center is by an Uvu in Castle Age, but now you're actually going to care about it. Mongols bug fixes. Improved biology now only provides plus 10% health instead of plus 15 for a total of plus 30% in instead of plus 35%. Good change. Nerfing their late game. Fixed a bug where Mongol improved tithe barns, did not list the correct resource income. Fixed a bug where Mongol tithe barns research time was 80 seconds instead of 60 seconds. Also gives the proper 30 food wood stone instead of 20. Kaganet Palace now produces Magadite in 90 seconds rather instead of 77 seconds. You did not need to be nerfing that landmark, let's just say that much. Uh, the Mongol landmark town center can now be packed while at maximum population. Stone, commerce, help text updated to specify trade bonus. Okay. Khan defense arrow tooltip updated to show correct bonus of plus two. I'm going to pause the music because I need to talk about something. A lot of people would be looking at this and say, hold on a minute, Drongo. I've just realized that this is in alphabetical order and you've gotten down to the Mongols and they didn't mention the Delhi. And Delhi are busted as fuck. And they didn't make any nerfs, significant nerfs, to the Mongols. <sighs> Instead of bringing other civs down, like the Delhi and the Mongols, they want to bring all the other civs up. So how can we make HRE a more viable civilization? How can we make the Chinese a more viable civilization? How can we make the English a more viable civilization? These are the things that they think can do that. So it's not about bringing the win rates of those other civilizations down. I just like had to check and make sure my hands are in the here. Like, there we go, down. It's about, I don't know if you guys heard that. If you heard that, leave me a comment and tell me what you heard. You know what, I'm, I'm just gonna go back in the video. What time are we at? 51 minutes. I'm gonna listen to see if I heard that. Cause I, I hear it in my headset. Uh, so my, my Red Bull fridge behind me, when it, it's got like two cycles you know, power on and power off. Uh, and so right now it just powered off. It reached maximum peak performance. So it's like, we don't need to cool anymore. So we're going to chill. And when it does that, it sends like a big, like a clicking sound like that through the circuit. Uh, and I hear that in my headset. Uh, but anyway, that's what they're doing. That's why they're not nerfing the Mongols. That's why they're not nerfing the Delhi because they want to bring everybody up to that level. Uh, so let's see how they do it. Uh, let's move on. Bruce. Warrior Monk. Fight. Uh, the weapon range increased from 1.15 to 3. So this is going to be a really big stabby boy. He's going to be stabbing like... Boo, boo. Hold on. Boo. He's, he's, he's really going to be stabbing quite far. Um, his charge weapon range increased from 2.15 to 3 as well. Uh, horse Archer Precision Technology in reduced from 2 to 1. Great change. I did not like having longbows on horses. Horse Archer Precision Technology Research Time reduced from 90 to 60 seconds. Okay. Streltsy double time ability no longer quickens their static deployment ability. Great, because those units don't need to be any stronger. Uh, good changes. Um, interesting that that was all that they did. Actually, it wasn't all they did. They changed the Lodger attack ship or fishing ship. Population cost increased from 1 to 2. Cost increased from, from 75 to 150 wood. Train time increased from 25 to 38 seconds. Health increase from 125 to 250. Deep water fish gather rate. You, you guys see what they're doing. I like this design choice. I think this is good. But at the same time, I'm very cognizant of how badly this could go for them. So what's the issue? The issue is that the Rus can make too many fishing boats in age one. And by the time they get to age two, they can just make them all become attack ships and kill you immediately. So instead of saying, all right, we're just going to make it so that they can't make attack ships or anything like that, which is which is my approach, the nuclear approach. I'm like, just give everybody galleys in H2. They're like, no, we think we can fix it. This is what they're going with. And I think this could work. Um, but you got to remember that with every good change like this, there can also be a bad side. And you might be wondering what it is I'm seeing. It is this right here. I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna paint it up. You guys know I love a good paint, a good painting session. We're gonna bring out the paint. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it live. All right, so let's say you're adding in normal fishing boats, okay? Uh, it would look like this, okay? So you would go up by one. 
Oh god, it's so slow because I've got the game open. I think it's like taking all the system resources away. Yo, I, I need to be running paint in my admin mode. Okay, so that that sort of get, gets you a trend. Oh, why are you coming out of that? That gets you a trend that's kind of like like that for your fishing resources, okay? Because it's going to take some time for these resources to come in. So now with the longer distance between this, okay? So essentially you extend each one of these out. That one comes out even further. This one comes out even further because of the time that it takes to make it, uh, to make each fishing boat, okay? It's going to, the, the time that it takes for you to get those resources, to have them in your stock, it's going to be much longer. But it's not going to be double as fast. It's going to cost you twice as much to get the resources in. It'll also cost you twice as much to have... Uh, or it's, it's going to cost you as, uh, twice as much to build the ships. It's also going to cost you twice the population space to construct the ships. Um, I will note that they don't get exactly double what it is for a deep water fish or double what it is for a shoreline fish, but it is still very comparable. The main issue is that you only have 13 seconds here. You've only got 13 seconds in difference, which means that you are receiving, for anybody who, here who's good at math, you guys would have recognized this straight away. I'm receiving double the amount of resources, almost double the amount of resources, but I'm only paying for half the amount of train time. All I'm saying is this looks like... Now, I know that they would do this for balance reasons. They would be like, well, we can't make it 50 seconds stronger. It's just not going to work. All right, well, let's let's bump this down a little bit because right now, 1 to 1.9, I mean, I understand it. Let's make it like 1.6, 1.7. I don't know, but like the problem is Rus is still going to be able to support this. Rus is still very easily going to be able to do all of this and still sort of like take over the game. It's going to be better, but at the same time, I mean, watch out. They're going to have a lot of resources very quickly. Okay, uh, Golden Gate trade buttons have been relocated to match markets. Golden Gate no longer shares double-click selection with markets. Good. Logger ships now have the correct updated upgrades applied after conversion. Fixed a bug with the Rus tech tree. I muted that one. That one, I had a, quite a tingle in my throat. Fixed a bug with the Rus tech tree where Abbey of Trinity didn't display all of its unique techs. Destroyed high trade house no longer produces deer until repaired. Can you imagine that? Oh, that's funny. Other bug fixes. Rams can no longer target naval units. Day ruined. Day ruined. <sighs> Repairability now shows the correct requirement when attempting to use it on an enemy player. What? Like before it was like insufficient wood and now it's like must be on your team or something like that. The Delhi Sultanate check tree now lists owned blades under Imperial Age instead of Castle Age. Did you move owned blades to Imperial Age and you didn't tell me? You're telling me you nerfed Delhi, but you didn't tell me that you nerfed Delhi? The Delhi Sultanate Tech Tree now lists own blades under Imperial Age instead of Castle Age. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Don't say that. It doesn't. The Delhi Sultan Tech Tree lists slow burning defenses under Imperial Age instead of Castle Age. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> English setup capability now has the correct requirement text. Field constructed tra traction trebuchets now have the correct tooltip. Compound of the Defender effect is no longer active when the landmark is destroyed. Cool change. All right. Uh, so that has been your balance changes. Now we look at the map change log. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm not going through this stuff. There is so much stuff in here. If I were to do this, it would take me 
a really long get really don't really long day really long time a, a huge amount of time uh, and we're already growing to 59 minutes in this video so if you've made it to the end i want to thank you guys for watching i hope you guys have enjoyed it so we've we've had our ups we've had our downs but most importantly we've we've got to the end i don't <laughs> i don't even know where i was going with that look it's been absolutely real with you guys uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be back in australia i'm so glad to be back here in the studio uh, I'm looking forward to making a lot more Age of Empires 4 content. I know you guys are, are looking forward to seeing a lot more. And it is great to see that the developers are are listening. It's great to see that the developers are reacting. It's great to see that the developers are really caring. So thank you. Thank you, developers. I mean it a lot. It's been awesome. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.